Christian, page 46. In this world I've tried most everything and I'm happy now to say there's nothing like religion in the good old fashioned way. I'm walking in the old time way and I want the world to know I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I pursue, I'm long to be a leader, like a mortal man would do. I would like to be a millionaire, with a million to be stoned. I'd rather be an old time Christian, Lord, than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian, than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian, with a Christian love to so. I'm walking in the rain on my way. All the world is bright since I got right. Now sing, pray and shout. All the burdens have been lifted since the Savior brought me out. I will tell the world will far again as I travel here below. I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with Christian love to show. I'm walking in the rain on high. I'm 
troubles of life. Let's sing page 30. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Page 30. Page 30. Mm, some of these days I'm going home when no sorrows ever come. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done, done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials. Save from oh. heartache, pain, and care. We shall all that glory share. And I will go to sit down beside of my Jesus. Lord. Trials in that hole. Lord, and tell my Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Oh, the Lord said, I'm resting in the We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done. Troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that hole. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. And I'm gonna shake my hand. Lord, and tell my kids in the morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Oh, Lord, sit down rest a little while. Hey, good friends, now wait for me. Should their faces I just see? We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done, done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials. Here's the whole world life of the pain. And we'll all be getting the day. And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm gonna sit down rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. And I'm going to shake that hand with the other. Lord, and tell my kid in the morning. Then I'm going to sit down outside my Jesus. Lord, I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. And I shall behold his blessed face. I shall feel his matchless grace. Once in the troubles and trials. Troubles and trials. Oh, my peace and joy supply. In that home of love divine. And I'm a gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I'm gonna sit down rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. And I'm a gonna shake that hand with the other. Lord, and tell my kid in the morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Oh, I'm gonna sit down rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that hole. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. I'm going to shake that hand with the elder. Lord, and tell my kid in the morning. Then I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. Oh, we're going to sit down and rest a little while. Oh, kids, when the priest shall wait for me. Turn 
their faces I shall see We'll soon be done We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Trials Just a home of lots of men And we'll all be gathered there And I'm gonna sit down with time like Jesus Oh, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while We'll soon be done We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Troubles and trials in that home Yes, in that home on the other side On the other side
you love the Lord, say amen. Oh, you can do better than that. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 The joy to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Appreciate God's goodness to us. Amen. Appreciate the wonderful time we had in the house of the Lord this morning. Yes. Praise God. The altar service. Amen. To just uh, power of God come into this place. And uh, I thought about it this afternoon. There's a lot of churches. I, I don't want to over-exaggerate, but there's a lot of churches in, in our country that never see a move of God, never have come to the altar even when they go to church. Amen. But I'm glad we still make room for the Holy Ghost to move. Amen. Really, you haven't had church till you come on to the altar. Amen. And come in contact with the Spirit of the Lord. And I pray tonight we'll just kind of pick right up where we left off this morning and let the power of God fall in our hearts, our lives. It's a great joy to have Brother and Sister Gabbard with us tonight. Amen. Looking forward to the Word of the Lord and uh, so many others uh, that are with us still uh, uh, visiting from the uh, wedding yesterday and stayed over to be in church with us today. And so we're uh, so grateful, so grateful for that. Brother Aslan, appreciate uh, Brother Aslan being with us. Testify for the Lord, brother. Appreciate the work of the Lord you're doing. God bless you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ask the Schaefer family. Why don't they come sing, girls, however you want to do it. Amen. While well, they're coming, Brother Isaac, testify for the Lord. right amen thank God thank God amen brother Marty Jones testify for the Lord all right amen amen brush Shane Middleton testify Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sure. All right. All right. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. All right. That's right. None of us would. Oh, yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. 
No, he ain't never sorry for testifying about Jesus. Brag on him. Brag on him. Yeah, sure. Brag on him. Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, hallelujah. How many glad for Jesus tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise the Lord.
Praise God. Brethren, come tonight if you would. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord in our offering. Amen. Let's be a blessing to Brother and Sister Gabbard tonight. I appreciate the work of the Lord. Amen. What a blessing they have been uh, to all of us. And uh, certainly he needs no introduction. So we're so thankful that they were willing to come and be with us tonight in service. They start Tuesday night at Brooklet and uh, go through Friday night, I believe, at Brooklet. So if you get a chance, I know uh, Brother Jeff, Sister Teresa, and the folks there would love to have you. And uh, so, but tonight we just are honored they're with us. So would you give tonight? It's under the Lord everything you give. Be a blessing to the man of God and uh, the ministry of the work of the Lord. Brother Eddie Barnes, lead us to the Lord in prayer, would you please? Praise the Lord. Good to have the Harries with us tonight, and uh, Brother Kane's helping us uh, with uh, trying to get the uh, gymnasium, gymnasium air conditioned, and uh, I thought he was coming down just to bring some air conditioning units, but uh, I think Mama had a different thing in mind wanting to come, so uh, it's good to have the Harries with us tonight. Come on, sing and uh, testify. Appreciate them being with us in the house of the Lord. Amen. Brother Josh Clayton testified tonight while they're coming to get ready. Amen. Good to see the Harnages tonight. So many visiting with us. Brother Jeff, testify. Brother Jeff Ursler, testify for the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Vernon Golf, testify for God tonight, would you please? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 about it. Amen. Oh, what about it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Yes, he is. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Testify. I appreciate the Lord tonight. It's so good to be back in Savannah. It's been a while, but um, appreciate how you all are treating my son and I heard great things already. Um, we are, you know, as I look at, and I hope this is okay, but as I look at the way that you all uh, conduct your church and all the related aspects of ministry, I was telling Brother Ed this morning that you almost give the appearance that there's no problems or no troubles. And, you know, everything is so wonderful. But being in church work, I know, I know how that goes. I understand. But what I'm saying is you're doing a great work. You're doing a great thing. And I appreciate your help and your investment in the children. We, 
Brother Robbie singing that song, We'll Soon Be Done With Troubles and Trials. Um, we, some time ago, we were picking up a gentleman for church, and he had some family members who had someone pass away, and they didn't have anyone to uh, sing at the funeral. So we went to the funeral, and we're there, and it's a predominantly black funeral there in the projects in Knoxville. And so the funeral director, a gentleman, comes up to us, and he says, uh, who's singing here? What, what are you all singing? And he said, I want you to sing a jumping song, something to get their mind off of what's in this casket. And so, Brother Robbie, we sang, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Uh, we are headed somewhere, aren't we? Amen. The Lord is soon to come. His coming is imminent. He's, he's soon to return. I'm looking forward to it. And he's given us just a taste of heaven in sending us the Holy Ghost. I was joking with Stephanie, told her this house is for sale next door. If I was going to buy it, they would want some earnest money. He said he's given us the earnest of the spirit, part of the purchase money or property, giving it advance for the security of the rest. Amen. He's given us the Holy Ghost. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into our hearts the things that he's prepared for us. But he's revealed them unto us by his spirit. Amen. We're going to heaven one day. Aren't you excited about that? If you would, help us sing. So deep and wide But by faith I see what's waiting over yonder And I can hardly wait till I get to the other side I'm leaving my troubles on this side of the river I'm going to lay them down Never pick them up again And when I get to the other side of the river I will never see my troubles again Aren't you looking forward to it? I'm going to lay him down. Never pick him up again. And when I get to the other side of the river, I will never see my troubles again. I will never see my troubles again. I'm leaving my troubles on this side of the river. I'm gonna lay them down. Lay them down. Never pick them up, up again. When I get to the other side of the river, I will never see my troubles again. the Lord. Amen. Choir, come on, get ready to sing for us tonight. Amen. Some have asked about how long the trailer is going to be out here for uh, Brother Compton's church. Until we get it full or as quick as we get it filled, uh, we'll figure out how to get it to Texas, all right? And if we need more, we'll get another trailer, all right? So you just keep bringing the stuff and we'll load it up and we'll get it there. And uh, Lord willing, pray about it for next Sunday. We will be trying to receive an offering uh, for Brother Compton's church, all right? So uh, remember that. 
uh, throughout the week. And if you uh, want to, if, as you bring your children to school, if you want to put stuff in the trailer, it'll be open in the mornings as well. All right. So you don't have to wait till Wednesday night, but if you would just load it on the trailer. All right. It'll be open throughout the day and uh, just look forward to what God's got in store for us. Amen. Brother Nelson, testify while they're getting ready. Matthew testified.
It's a great joy to have Brother and Sister Gabber tonight and uh, some friends of theirs. They pastored there at the Bond Church and uh, just appreciate the work of the Lord. Brother Gabber is doing and even how many times have I heard the last few years God's just used him in a powerful, powerful way in encouraging and, and blessing and, and strengthening churches all across the country. And I appreciate that. Appreciate it. It's a great honor for us to have him tonight in the house of the Lord. Be a great night for somebody to get saved. Be a great night for somebody to be sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, healed divinely by the power of God. Whatever God wants, I wanted him this service tonight, don't you? Would you stretch your hands toward heaven, ask God to bless them as they come, sing, preach, testify tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given to us. This is the Lord's day. We honor you. We magnify you. Let your will be done. Bless the man of God. Meet us around this altar, Lord. Let your perfect will be accomplished. In Jesus, Jesus, wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. She wants to sing. Go ahead. Wonderful to be here tonight. Praise God. We certainly appreciate uh, all that uh, is going on here. We have been excited about the uh, school here ever since we first heard about it and uh, been praying ever since we was on these grounds when we were just getting off the ground and expecting great things for God in the time to come. We're so glad tonight to uh, have uh, our friends with us, Brother Ron Connor and Sister Debbie. I pastored them for a number of years. We became great friends. And uh, they, uh, when they found out that we were going to be at uh, Brother Jeff's next week, uh, they got together and they said, uh, is it possible that you might all be able to slip away on Thursday? Said, if you will, we'll get a place for you down on the island, and we'll go down there and, and spend a couple of days before you have to go to Jeff's. And he said, uh, and Brother Ron said, and we'll go by Savannah and be with them on Sunday night. I mean, you can't pass up a deal like that. I mean, and, and I mean, he has took us out, just about smacked my hand if I tried to pay for anything, and uh, just fixed, uh, you know, just, just, just been great. But we are glad to be here tonight. I certainly appreciate the Lord, and uh, I appreciate Brother and Sister Connor. They have, I told Brother Ryan, if there's any way possible that you could kidnap them, especially in, uh, as your school is going on and, and your building, you need to get them. All through the years that I pastored, I could just say to Brother Connor, you know, I'd like, I'd like for this, I don't know if it could be done, but I'd just like to see this happen here. And the next thing I knew, he had a blueprint going and he was doing it. And uh, they, uh, he got, to, he's a man can't spend any time on his hands. He had one winter when he wasn't working, he, uh, he's got a construction business, the concrete and what have you. And so uh, he built a number of big, huge barbecue uh, pits or, or whatever on wheels and for years then all the meat that went into the bond camp meeting they fixed outside on those grills he just lined them up down through there 150 burgers to a grill maybe or something and uh, all the meat and so uh, and, that, and that's just one of the things the guy can do he can do it and so you know I don't think there's any chance you getting him but you could try amen amen well we are certainly glad to be here. We appreciate Brother Ryan and his family. Uh, they're just, uh, they're more than friends. And I appreciate what God's doing. And uh, I, I say it like this. We need to live like the Lord is coming any minute. And to build and to plan like another generation. And another generation will have what we've got. That is the way we do it. Amen. That's why even though we look for and hope for and pray for the imminent coming of the Lord, we're going to occupy till he comes. Amen. That is the burden we ought to have. And of course, you know, if you know anything about us, our burden is for revival. We, uh, uh, we are uh, burdened for the church of the last day, believing with everything in me that we can and will have one more final breakthrough before the coming of the Lord. I know that we're in the last days. I know we are in a falling away. But what you don't understand is that this world has always had two churches. The real, genuine, blood-bought, sanctified church of God 
And that other church, that worldly church, that hearted church, they've run parallel and more and more in this last day, they are being separated. Amen. Sifting has never hurt the corn. It just exposes the chaff and the wind blows it away. And so while they are having a falling away, while they are going deeper in apostasy, we're going to have revival. A mighty outpouring and visitation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me say this quickly as a testimony. Uh, if you've heard and I'm prayed for us, I want you to know we appreciate it. We were here last year in May at Brother Butler's. And uh, I didn't feel good while I was there. I felt like I was just probably wore out and uh, been on the road for so long. And, uh, but I went home. And uh, I got sick, the sickest I've ever been in my life. I never knew that a man could be that sick. I never knew you could hurt that bad. I never knew. And I, I tell you now, I don't know that I would have survived it if it hadn't been for my wife praying. I appreciate her prayers. She is a prayer warrior. Uh, one morning, there was it had been all day long, all night long, 3.30 in the morning, no relief. And I got over in an old chair and stretched her back, and she got down at my feet and started praying. And at 5 o'clock, she, she was still praying when I drifted off to sleep. It was 74 days from the time I got sick. I had not been able to sleep in my bed at all or sleep much of any time. And on a, on a Friday night, I, I got a, like I got a touch from heaven, and I laid in my own bed for a while. On Saturday night, I told Sister Gabbard, I'm going to try it again. And we laid in our bed at 5 o'clock on Sunday morning. I woke up. And I said, Lord, I thank you that I am in my own bed for this few hours. But, oh, Lord, how long will this trial go? And then from way down inside my soul somewhere, I heard Isaiah 40, verse number 2. I knew what it said, but I slipped out of the bed, went into my living room, opened my Bible. Speak ye comfortably unto Jerusalem. Her warfare is accomplished. About that time, Sister Ann came in the room. Oh, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you, is it all right? And I said, yeah, I, I'm okay. And she said, well, I said, wait, let me tell you what the Lord just spoke to me. When I said that to her, Power of God hit her on the top of the head and she went into a shout, shouting up and down our living room. Power of God hit me in the top of the head, went out my toes, and God healed me by the power of God. Hallelujah. God is still in the healing business. He's still on the throne. He's still Almighty God. Amen. He's just looking for somebody that will dare to believe Him in this last day. Amen. So I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate being here tonight in this pulpit. I, uh, I've got a burden on my heart, and uh, if you'll just bear with me, when I start kicking this around in my mind, I've got to preach it until I get it sat out there the way it ought to be. But I want to talk to us tonight, and I, uh, uh, you probably ought to shout it. Uh, I want you to turn with me tonight to the book of Daniel, chapter 1. You know... By and large, Daniel is, is a book that we so uh, hurriedly rush through the, the preliminaries to get to the prophecies and all that's going on there. We fail to realize uh, what it was and what kind of a man it was that God could put his hand on and use in such a way that to make him uh, that uh, revelator of, uh, of revealer of secrets to us. Amen. So uh, as a launching place tonight, just one verse of scripture, Daniel chapter number 1 and uh, verse number 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Lord will stand by me and you'll pray for me tonight. I want to preach on the discipline of a godly man. 
or a man that God will use. Father, we're here by the kind invitation of this pastor and congregation and Brother Ron's and the circumstances that's brought us here. But Lord God, I stand here tonight, Lord, understanding that, that it's uh, uh, not limelight nor applaudance, but oh God, it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that we need now. It's that breathing upon us, oh Lord God, to revive and regenerate and renew. Lord God, let that spirit be upon me. Lord, that transforms a man and makes him a prophet in the sense of the New Testament. God, at the conclusion of these broken remarks, would you let this altar be a witness to the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost? We ask it in the name of Jesus. And the congregation said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. A lot of stories, and let me clarify before I start, a lot of stories, a lot of things that go around that, uh, you know, that we've done this or the Lord's, ha but I, I am nothing. I really am not. I'm old and I'm fat and I'm bald-headed and I wear glasses and I've got some false teeth. I'm just a man. I've never understood what it is. I never tried to. As a young man, God did something. And he told me, he said, it's just this has destroyed men that have been great. Don't let it destroy you. And I've never, ever tried to do it when it wasn't there. Sometimes I think a congregation is disappointed because they're looking for something supernatural beyond what. But when it happens, it just happens. And if it happens, you give God the glory for it. Because without him, we are not anything. The Lord will help me this year at, at, the, at the, the minister's conference I'm going to preach on. How to survive the anointing for a lot of men ain't. Amen. Daniel purposed in his heart. You know, for, uh, for most of our people in this hour, the word discipline, uh, it seems to invoke some kind of a, of a drawback, of a resistance maybe. But what we're talking about tonight is, is uh, the heart of, uh, and the very heart of spiritual discipline is a deep burning desire and a relationship with God. The one thing more than anything else that just generation needs right now is a crisis experience that will forever change their lives. I've told them across this country one of the mistakes that we made from my generation was we gave the young men and young women, the, we gave them the answers when we should have given them the book. Because this, this gospel is so, it is so uh, created of God that every generation has got to get it for themselves. That's why it's so important that we have this college and this teaching because we need in this hour the foundation. The psalmist said if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? My question to that is, if the foundations are destroyed, what happened to the church and what didn't they do? Amen. But here, the man that God will use in this hour must be, first of all, morally correct. He must stand on every principle that God has defined. And more than that, he must be a man who refuses to bow under pressure. Look at this man here. In this first chapter, in this first, this eighth verse, Daniel purposed in his heart, I will not defile myself with the king's meat. Now you know the story, you know the history. This, he was a great monarch, a very wise man in many ways. 
as his kingdom spread out over the whole world, he realized the only way to hold this kind of a makeup was to bring men from every nationality, from every part of the world and bring them in there and bring them, assimilate them into his kingdom and give them places of authority. But in order to do that, he set out to systematically destroy everything from their lives. He changed their names. He changed their lifestyle. He gave them the things, amen, of the kingdom to soften them and to make them weak. But in the midst of all that, a young man, possibly just a young teenager, made his mind up, I will not defile myself with this. God help us in this hour that we're living in. Amen. As we border on the brink of revival, God give us some young men and women again who will purpose in their heart. Keep your heart with all diligence. From out of it are the issues of life. God give us somebody with a heart. Uh, when I was pastor, I had a young man in my church who trained uh, beagle hounds for competition men, for men to compete. He had one young dog there that was absolutely the most amazing young dog I ever followed. I mean, he run a rabbit like he had check lines on it. He just, uh, he was the perfect, he was perfect in every way. And I, looking at that dog that morning, I would have said, that's going to be the next world champion. But about two hours later, when it got hot and the pressure got on, he began to fall back. And after a while, he quit. I said, what's the matter with that dog, son? He said, he don't have the heart. God move in our midst in this hour that we're living in and replace in us a heart felt Holy Ghost conviction that will stand the storm and the trial that is shaking us right now across the world. Hallelujah. It is in youth that the victory is won. He trained himself to control life's hungers. In this hour that we're living in, we are bombarded with innumerable hungers. The hunger for power, the hunger for prestige, the hunger to be accepted, the natural hungers that used unnaturally destroy. All of these things. That's why when the devil came to Jesus and said to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, I command these stones to be made bread. For the Bible said it was afterward he was hungry. But his answer was, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, he refused to do, to use unlawful something unlawfully. And had he given in there, he would have given everywhere. That's why we've got to draw the line. I'm preaching tonight on the principles, amen, of a godly man. The discipline of a godly life. Number one is there's got to be a heart that has settled it. It's in the heart. There's got to be a conviction. And a conviction, my friend, is something you prayed through on for yourself. It's not handed down. There is no grandchildren in the things of God. Amen. And God uh, looks to you and you've got to settle it for yourself. One of the proudest moments I ever had of Brent, my son, in school. We went to, he went to a secular high school and they wanted him on the ball team. I mean, I turned that old yard at the house and barnyard ball. He'd just stand over about that forward position just all day long. So the coach came to him and said, Brent, I want you on my team. Now, now I, I know I have a Pentecostal background, and I know how your dad's going to, but I believe if you let me talk to him, 
and explain to him that you won't have to dress out. You can come out in your jogging pants and uh, whatever, you know. I believe he looked at that man, Brother Ron, and he said, Sir, with all due respect, that's not my daddy's conviction. It's my conviction. I have a conviction that says I cannot play competition sports and be the man God wants me to be in the hour we're living in. What the world needs right now in this uncertain, dark, violent world we're living in is somebody, amen, that's not give them an opinion but can say I know that I know that I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, help me, Lord, to be sweet here. We've got some of the best talent I've ever seen in my life. We've got some of the greatest young men. Great ability. With all the assets of the information age. Punch it in. Print it out. And you've got the outline. But that's why that I'm preaching like I am. I just feel him breathe on me. That's why I'm preaching like I am tonight. Because preaching, when it's nothing more than an art, without any heart, will be barren and tie and desolate in the hour we're living in. God help us tonight to more than anything else. This world needs to know that you believe what you believe. Amen. When God put his hand on Joseph, Joseph was a young man. And uh, personally, the commentary according to John is he's a little cocky. He even told his mom and dad, hey, mom, you and dad bowed down to me. In my dream. Oh yes, God had his hand on him. And God would use him to save a whole nation. But before he could go into the palace, he had to go into the pit. And from the pit, he went into the prison. And Psalm 105 said, hey Amen, the word of the Lord tried him. He was, his feet they hurt with fetters. And the Middle rain and says, an arn came into his soul. I want to tell us tonight, the first thing that Daniel did was, he said, there is a purpose. And I will not violate that. Somewhere back there, he settled it. Listen, you don't have to go out and sow your old wild oats. You don't have to be okay. You can get grow. God, give us some morally pure, holy young men and women who will grow up in the house of God. Amen. Who God can put through the pressure and they will not bow nor bend or sell. God, give me somebody that will dare to believe him in this hour. I still say somewhere. Amen. Somewhere tonight, maybe. Amen. Somewhere in this, oh great God, somewhere in this America, some young man may be crawling into the pulpit, driving mouth and his knees knocking but he's about to become our next Wesley he's about to become amen our greatest preacher of the hour he's about to shake our nation somebody's going to do it why don't you try oh God hallelujah glory to God he would not be When the pressure puts is put on Joseph, he says, I will not sin against my God. I'm not going to do this. I may, I may lose my coat, but I'll keep my integrity. I may lose my coat, but I'll keep my purity. I'll keep myself. Hey Amen. I may, I may go back. It may lead me into the prison, but I'd rather be in a prison here as bound in my heart to the sum of the things that are in this world in the hour that we're living in. God, stand by me, Lord, and help me tonight when I preach to you. Hey Amen. There's a godly man that God would like to use. We've had too many scandals. 
Too many failures. Too many politically pushed men who've never been through the fire. God does not use you, friend, until you are a broken man. Understand that tonight. When you say, God, I'm going to do more than I ever have. Amen. It doesn't mean you're going to go tiptoeing through the glory world. It may be you may walk the very valley of the shadows of darkness and demons screaming at you. But if you'll come out on the other side. God, that's why, that's why Joseph... When they held that baby boy, he said, call him Manasseh, for God has caused me to forget yesterday. Is it possible tonight that there might be need for a birth of a Manasseh in your heart tonight? The second child is Ephraim, which means fruitful. But before they can be a fruitful, there's got to be a Manasseh. Amen. You've got to forget everything else but pleasing God. Doing what God wants you to do. Help me, Lord, tonight. Amen. And then, and then this, this man, Daniel, set bounds that he would not cross over. I will not compromise. If you can be bought, the devil will pay the price. But if you will come through, he said, he knew the decree had been signed. He knew that they challenged him in his religion. But he went back just like he'd done yesterday. The window being opened towards Jerusalem, he prayed three times that day. The king would have liked to have done something to deliver him, but he didn't need no king's help. God don't need the monarch to help him. He don't need anybody's help. Amen. There is a religion. There is a real genuine, heartfelt, Holy Ghost re- religion that a lion can't eat. That old colored preacher said they didn't try Daniel that night. Said because one of them lines said he ain't nothing but backbone anyway. Listen, the, there's never, ever, ever been a time. Oh, great God of heaven! There's never been a time when the pressure's on to compromise. Back it up just a little bit. View it just this way or that way. Just compromise. But I'm going to tell you, Jabesh Gilead found out real quick what it means to compromise. When the Amorite and Nahash came up against them, they said, make a treaty with us. Make a treaty with us. And he said, this is the only way I'll do it. I'll thrust out your right eye and lay it as a reproach upon all of Israel. I preached one time on the danger of a one-eyed religion. First thing the, the conqueror does to the conquered is put out their right eye, cut off their thumbs and their big toes. They're still useful as slaves, but they can no longer carry the weapons or the shield. God help me to be sweet. Are you praying, Ann? In this hour that we're living in, we've got too many men that have compromise their convictions until they've been blinded in their right eye you see when you're one eyed you can't they can see the love of God and the mercy of God but they don't see the holiness and the purity of God they no longer can stand in the pulpit and fight with I've preached with men and preached under men who led the battle and boldly swung the sword until one day they compromised with something. Now I will tell you something. If it's not happened to you, it will. There is, as sure as there is a second definite work of grace, there is a second time 
when the enemy will come to you and offer it to you again. Remember the three who boys? I said, now listen, boys, I'm going to give you another chance. Yeah, let's think this thing over. Maybe you better back up here just a little bit. Their answer was, O oh, king, the God who we serve, if he wants to, but if he don't, we're not bowing, we're not bending, and we're not taking it down. Wrong is still wrong, no matter how popular it becomes. And right is still right when it must walk alone and become unpopular. It won't be a popularity contest, but heaven will note it. You know what the answer was for Jabez Gilead. Saul said, before the sun gets hot, help's on the way. Don't back up. Hang on. He heard you when you said, I don't think I can take any more. I can't stand it. Maybe I come all this way just to tell you, help's on the way. Before it gets any hotter, before the fire gets any hotter, before the trial gets any greater, before the confusion gets any more, help's on the way. God's come by to help somebody. Amen. Amen. Hang on. Don't compromise. Don't sell out. Don't take something less. Hold on to what you know is right. You'll be glad you did. Amen. Amen. Across this country. There is a place. But I won't go any further. The line's been drawn. Live, die, sink, or swim right here. Number one, he had a purpose in his heart. Number two, he had a line that he would not cross. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I feel the whole. Number three, he had a faith. He had a trust without terms. If he don't, it ain't going to change the way I feel about him. Blessed, you remember what he said to those boys, go back and tell John, the last the blessed are they that are not offended in me. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost just sweet in here for a moment. Are you still going to love him when he don't perform up to your expectations? The whole, most of the whole wholeness movement knows now how that Sister Ann for 12 years trusted God and hung on and swung the pendulum between life and death. One time L.D. Moore called me early in the morning. He said, Brother Gabbard, I went into my little church at, at uh, dark last night. I come out at daylight this morning and said the only thing God said was more. It's in my hands. He said, I wish I could tell you more. But in those early days, in those early days, I walked the fields. I've never been, you know, I, I've, never, I've never done like other people. I've been a mountain man, and, and uh, when I really need to, I go to the hills and the fields and maybe the graveyard and sit on the tombstone. But I get out there sometimes, and I walk among the fields. And the wind will blow, and the orchard grass will look like waves on the ocean, and the Holy Ghost will come by. I was out there, and Sister Amber looked up. She looked up at me so sweet from the bed of her affliction and pain, and she'd say, "Dad, you ain't turned it loose yet." I said, "Baby, I ain't going to." Dad, we've always been submissive to God. Whatever the Lord wants. I walked out there that day in the field, walking alone. The wind blowing. All of a sudden, I heard him. I said, son, do you still love me? I 
I said, with all of my heart, Lord, if I know my heart. You was the first love of my life when I really, really knew what love meant. And the second. And he said, do you still trust me? I said, Lord, I don't know how to trust anything else. I've never trusted anybody. I didn't trust anybody until I met you. He said, will you trust me with Sister Anne? I said, yeah, yeah, I'll trust you. He said, even if I take her out of your sight, will you trust me to take better care of her than you could? Daniel said, there's one more thing. I trust God without terms. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't understand, Lord, but I still love you. I walked back into that little room where, where Ann was on the bed, and I walked up and pulled my chair up, and she looked up and smiled and said, you settled it, didn't you? I settled it. The second thing that makes a man a, a discipline of a godly man is when he comes to that place that I'm not going to, I'm not going to cross over this. And then the third thing is that I trust him. I don't understand it, but I don't have to. I'm going to do it anyway. I just, this is what's been on my heart. You know, a few weeks ago, I helped preach the funeral of a little old fella named Latell Smith. I'm over in Jacksonville, Alabama. Sometimes Latell didn't talk as fluently and communicate like some people does unless he's talking to God. But he could talk to God for five hours, and he did often. He was known among us that knew him. He was known for that high step and shout that he had. When he'd get into a dance and go into the high step and shout, he was known for that. He lost his only son violently, tragically, and he never got over it. But after it's all done, the next service he come back to church. The power of God got to moving. And you know what Latell done? He worshiped. He went into that high step and shout, and he worshiped God. And he never quit worshiping God. Until a few weeks ago, he ran a couple laps around the church, hit that high step, and stepped into eternity. Boom. Gone home. Amen. The third thing that makes him great is he trusts his God, whether he delivers him or not. And because of the, the disciplined life, and we're going, I'm closing here, because of this disciplined life, Three dynasties, three monarchs testified that Daniel's God was God of all the gods. Amen. And Daniel had a special messenger that told him, you are beloved of God. God loves you. Daniel received the greatest revelation of the end time of any prophet. God is looking for somebody that will break this revival out. Somebody that will be pure. That will stand on every divine principle of God. will not compromise and will not and God will once again turn this world upside down just before the coming of the Lord 
we are balancing on the verge of a move of God like you've never seen. All these little meetings that we're having, this freedom that we've not had before, that you're testifying to. Oh, glory be to God. And all across this country that I'm seeing and I'm terrible to testify to is the raindrops, the showers, just before the coming deluge. Amen. And when we get hungry enough, humble enough, and holy enough, God will do it for us. Amen. Amen. God's looking for somebody that'll be that man. That's why the, I looked across. I'm trying. I'm closing. I looked across this vast choir while I go, and I said, I wonder. I wonder if there. I wonder if I look. I wonder if one of these men, these young men, will rise up and tell us not what they read, but what God spoke to their heart and watch it come to pass. Amen. God, go ahead. Hear my Lord. Send me. I'll do it. I'll do it. Have you ever dared to say it? Not just in an emotional high in a meeting. This is the way. This is what God is moving on my heart on as I'm all across the country right now. Is to challenge you to go beyond where you are. For the old men to dream the dream again. You know why Moses looked at and, and said, talked about the blessing of the bush. May the blessing of the bush be upon them. Because it was at the bush, after 40 years, the dream was reborn in an 80-year-old man. And he led the charge to bring Israel out. Let your old men dream dreams. God, let your young men see the vision. And let the Spirit be poured out again on the handmaidens and the men of our God. Until we have an army rising up, undefeatable, singing the song of marching on to victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The victory is to be won. I want to be part of it. Well, how about you? Amen. your hands would you thank the Lord God will do what he said he would do now will you do what he said for you to do hallelujah just three principles that made him a godly man but there's three things this is we're closing with this those three things those three things are in the reach of every one of you and God said I'll do I will I will I will right. amen stand with me please oh, hallelujah. hallelujah stand with me I wonder tonight I wonder if you would dare to say Lord hear my You may feel like you're down to, Dad, you may feel like you're down this one old squirrel rifle one shot at a time. Make it count. There's a message. 
son, that's not yet been preached. It's a song. It's not yet been sung. Why don't you dare to do it? I wonder tonight if we'd come around these altars, if you'd say, Lord, here am I. Use me for your glory. Whatever you have to do to me, I want to be your man or your woman in this hour. I'd like to have the rebirth of the dream that I had. I'd like to catch the vision I've never seen. I'd like to be that man. How about it? As they sang the song tonight, we opened the altars. Let's come around tonight. Let's seek the face of God. If you will help my weakness, I know that I'm not worthy, Lord, of Thee. By eyes of faith, I see Thee upon the cross of Calvary. me thy servant be. Jesus, use me. And, oh, Lord, don't refuse me. For surely there's a work that I can do. Use me. 